Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Sir Steven and for today's session of our Medical Histology Laboratory series, we will talk about the hematopoietic and immune systems. This is just the first part of our series in Histology Laboratory and we will do an overview of the definition of your immune system. Let's start. By definition, your immune system is a conceptually divided into innate and your adaptive immunity. When you say innate immunity, this is a rapid stereotype response, which consists of physical, chemical, and biological barriers. Though resistance is not acquired through interaction with the antigen, it is being carried out by your specialized cells such as your macrophage, your monocytes, your neutrophils, dendritic cells, natural killer cells, your mast cells, your eosinophils, and your basophils. Where there is main mechanisms including phagocytosis, the release of inflammatory mediators, and the activation of your complement system proteins. It is present in all individuals and it does not change or adapt to following contact. It's non-specific. However, on the other side, your adaptive immunity is an induced following contact with your foreign antigens. This is very dependent on the activation of specialized cells and soluble molecules that are produced by your lymphocytes, your natural killer cells or your T cells, your T and B lymphocytes, your dendritic cells, or your antigen presenting cells. We have also soluble molecules, including your antibodies, your cytokines, and your chemokines. They exhibit diversity and memory and also specificity. It involves two main components, your cell-mediated and antibody-mediated components. And it's very specific and the diversity, diversity of recognitions are the key for your adaptive immunity. In this hemo hematopoietic cell lineage, um, it is depicted here, the schematic will illustrate you the general features of your lymphoid and the myeloid cell derivation from your pluripotent stem cells. And both of your myeloid and your lymphoid lineage cells are derived from a common precursor cell. There are general maturation stages from immature to fully differentiated hematopoietic cells are listed here in this schematic diagram. Moving forward with this table, this is the basic characteristic of your immunoglobulin classes. We have your IgD, IgM, G, E, and A, and their structure and their following characteristics. And we will learn more of each, um, the histological and photographs later on in the following slide. Next is your selection of your HLA disease association. We have your HLA molecules, the B27, the DQ2, DQ8, DRB1, 0, 1 to 3, DRB1, 0, 7, DR, DQB1, 0, 6, 2, HLA, DR2, DQ2, DQ3, and your DRBI or DRB1. And their as disease associate, association, such as your ankylosing spondylitis, celiac disease, your ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, nar narcolepsy, insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus, and your rheumatoid arthritis. We'll go with the lymph node. In the macroscopic anatomy, it is round or reniform in shape. Normally, it does not exceed 1 cm in diameter. It is larger during stimulation. It has a tan pink homogeneous cut surface. It has a blood supply. There are arteries as is shown here in this image and veins that enter and exit at the hilus respectively. It has also lymphatics. The afferent lymphatics will enter in the subscapular sinus. It has a branching network of sinuses that drains into the efferent lymphatic vessels. And there are efferent lymphatics that exit at hilus. This is the lymph node graphic showing you in your left the usual arrangement of the cortical-based follicles in blue arrow, the directional flow of lymph through the afferent, the white arrow, the single white arrow, and the bold efferent arrow, lymphatics is indicated in yellow arrows. On your right is the follicle features. This illustration of a secondary follicle shows many of the key histologic features such as your light and dark zonation, the tangible body macrophage in curved black arrow, the follicular dendritic cells in your blue curved arrow, the mantle zone in bold arrow, and the marginal zone in 
single white arrow. On your left is a cortically based secondary follicle in a single arrow para, in single arrow in blue arrow the paracortex the medullary region in bold arrow the sinuses in curved arrow which is this and these are visualized in this reactive appearing lymph node on your right is um, a polarization the light the light in a curved arrow and the dark single arrow zones in the prominent tangible body macrophage in bold blue arrow this impart a starry sky pattern in the secondary follicle the dark zone is composed predominantly of centroblasts that following antigenic stimulation mature into centrocytes which are located primarily within the light zone on your left is a secondary follicle with a dark and light zonation and a distinct surrounding mantle zone which is in cur um, bold arrow which is shown here the dark zone which is a curved blue arrow consists predominantly of immature central blasts and a few immunoblasts while the light zone the single white arrow consists of more mature centrocytes the surrounding mantle zone is consisting of naive b cells in your right is a neoplastic follicle from a follicular lymphoma that lacks polarization and tangible body macrophages and has a diminished mantle zone in blue arrow such as this on your left is a predominance of central blast in blue arrow in the dark zone and central sites the curved white arrow in the light zone of this germinal center that is illustrated here at the high power. On your right, the dark zone of a germinal center is containing a several tangible body macrophage in your single white arrow shown here at high power. Note that the cytoplasmic debris in curved arrow is a finding common among antigenically activated secondary follicles. The central blasts show a large oval nuclei that often have multiple nucleoli in a bold white arrow, such as shown here. This is a left the CD20 immunostaining highlighting the B cells of the cortical based follicles in black single arrow in this lymph node. Note the paucity of your CD20 plus B cells in the paracortical, the curved blue arrow, and the medullary, the bold arrow regions of the lymph node. On your right is a medium power that viewing a, a cortical based lymph node follicle in single black arrow that is composed primarily of CD20 plus B cells. On your left is a CD3 immunostain highlighting the general distribution of the CD plus, CD3 plus T cells within your paracortical blue arrow and the medullary bold arrow regions. Note that the few scattered T cells, the follicular helper T cells seen within the B cell predominant follicles in curved arrow. On your right is a CD3 immunostain at medium power that highlights the scattered T cells within the germinal center. We call it the follicular helper T cells and the predominance of the T cells within the paracortical region. On your left is a BCL2 immunostaining shows the typical staining pattern of a reactive lymph node. The negative staining in the germinal center and the positive staining in all other areas. The BCL2 that has an anti-apoptolic activity. So the lack of BCL2 expression in B cells that undergoing antigen-driven selection in the germinal center allowing these cells to undergo apoptosis if necessary. On your right is the KI67 immunostaining showing you a polarized appearance or the dark and light zones which is typical of a benign reactive follicle. On your left is a dilated subscapular sinus in blue arrow with numerous histiocytes, the round nuclei, abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm, and scattered small lymphocytes shown here at the medium power. On your right, a small portion of a medullary cord with mature plasma cells in a white single arrow is shown at high power. Adjacent is a dilated sinus with scattered histiocytes in bold black arrow and small lymphocytes in curved blue arrow. On your left is a reactive lymph node that has marked paracortical or interfollicular expansion in curved blue arrow. A residual follicle in a single arrow is at the top of the field. This feature is commonly associated with viral mediated lymphadenopathies. On your right is a hyperplastic paracortex with a heterogeneous cell population is shown. 
Note that the large immunoblast in blue arrow with prominent centrally located nucleoli admixed with small lymphocytes and histiocytes. These features are commonly associated with viral infections. On your left is a thoracic lymph node, often show an abundant anthracotic pigment in uh, black single arrow that is typically associated with histiocytic infiltrates in um, white single arrow and distortion of the usual lymph node architecture in blue curved arrow. On your right is the abundant anthracotic pigment in blue arrow and scattered histiocytes in curved white arrow that are shown at high power. These features are common among thoracic or the pulmonary lymph nodes. Next is your spleen. The macroscopic anatomy is it's a bean-shaped organ covered by a smooth capsule. The blood supply is via the splenic arteries. The splenic artery enters at hilos and branches in spleen. In the microscopic anatomy, the splenic vasculature, your blood enters the spleen via the splenic artery, which then branches into the trabecular arteries. These are accompanied by veins and lymphatic vessels branching the trabecular artery surrounding by your dense connective tissue that comprise the splenic cough. There are trabecular arteries that emerge from the connective tissue, becoming arterioles of the white pulp. The central arterioles continue into the follicles. The follicular arterioles become smaller and terminate in the marginal zone or form a vascular tuft of capillaries in red pulp. The capillaries in red pulp end as sheeted capillaries. They lack direct communication to sinuses. These sheeted capillaries are lined by concentrically arranged macrophages and reticular fibers that become continuous with the reticular network of the red pulp. The sheeted capillaries in conjunction with the cords function as the filtering unit of your spleen and the red cells enter adjacent sinuses via the sheeted capillaries and cords. On your left is the functional filtering unit of spleen which is illustrated. The red cells pass from the sheathed capillaries lined by concentrically arranged macrophages in blue arrow into the cords in bold arrow and then into the sinuses in curved arrow. Old and or the abnormal red cells will be removed during this process. On your right, the white curved arrow white, and the red blue arrow pulp are viewed at low power in this normal section of your spleen. A thin spleeny capsule in curved blue arrow with silvers of branching tuberculae in a uh, um, single black arrow is also noted here. On your left is nearly all the splenic compartments are illustrated in this image. The white pulp, the B cell in curved white arrow, and T cell in blue single arrow compartments. The red pulp in um, black single arrow and splenic cuff in bold white arrow is shown here. A B cell follicle is shown on your right at the medium power. The follicle shows features of activation as noted by the germinal center in a single white arrow. Note the surrounding rim of dense small lymphocytes and the less dense and more expanded rim of lymphocytes which represent the mantle in curved blue arrow and the marginal zones in this uh, black double arrow, bold arrow respectively. On your left is a splenic follicle that's showing many of the same features as those of the lymph nodes. In this secondary antigen-stimulated follicle, a tangible body macrophage in bold white arrow is seen within the germinal center, and the surrounding mantle zone in curved blue arrow is shown. On your right, this high-power view illustrates this mantle zone in blue single arrow with a dense rim of small B cells with scanned cytoplasm, the outer marginal zone in curved white arrow which is a lens, le less dense rim of B cells with more abundant cytoplasm and a small section of the germinal center in bold white arrows. In your left is the T cell compartment, the periarteriolar lymphatic sheath in curved white arrow, the B cell compartment follicle in a single white arrow, and the perifollicular zone in bold arrow are shown. The T cell and your B cell compartments are together making up the white pulp. On your right, the perifollicular zone in bold arrow lies adjacent to the follicle in a single white arrow and the T-cell compartment, the periarteriolar lymphatic sheath in bold curved arrow and contains numerous erythrocytes, red blood cells, in addition to capillaries and sheathed capillaries is not shown here. 
On your left is a red pulp consisting of the capillaries, the venous sinuses, and the splenic cords, the cords of Bill, Bill Roth. Several follicles along the edges are also present. On your right is a branching capillary lined by flattened endothelial cells as shown in blue single arrow. In the spleen, the arterioles lead to capillaries which then lead to sheathed capillaries that are arranged concentrically and lined by concentrically arranged macrophages. On your left is a splenic capillary lined by the flat endothelial cells in bold blue arrow precedes the sheathed capillary in single black arrow, which is lined by concentrically arranged macrophages and a network of reticular cells and fibers. On your right, sinuses lined by littoral cells, a type of cuboidal endothelial cell that stains where both endothelial and histiocytic markers are shown here in blue arrow, single arrow. Several small capillaries are also noted along the bottom. Note that the flatter endothelial cells in curved white arrow that line the capillaries. On your left is the capillaries in um, single white arrow, sheathed capillaries in curved arrow, blue arrow, and, and sinus are shown. Note the abundant hemosiderin in bold black arrow in the macrophages that are part of the sheathed capillaries and cords. On your right, the splenic cords in bold blue arrow contains macrophages, reticular cells, and the plasma cells that represent the tissue that lies between the sinuses. Note the individual red cells that are passing from the cords into the sinuses in bold in the black arrow. Old and or damaged red cells that cannot squeeze through will be removed by your spleen. On your left is a sinuses filled with packed red blood cells in blue single arrow and seen in this image from a congested spleen. On your right, the B cell follicles in bold uh, uh, sorry in uh, blue single arrow are prominent in this spleen that has undergone follicular hyperplasia and are highlighted by a CD20 immunohistochemical stain. On your left is a CD20 immunostain highlighting the B-cell follicles of the spleen. On your right, the T-cell compartment of a periarteriolar lymphatic sheath is highlighted by CD3. Note that the negative areas of staining in a single black arrow that represent the B-cell follicles together, these two compartments make up the white pulp of the spleen. On your left, the splenic sinuses in curved blue arrow and capillaries are highlighted by factor 8. The space between the sinuses represent the splenic cords or the cords of Bill Roth in bold black arrow. After passing through the cords into the sinuses, the red cells then progress to venules and veins. On your right is the reticulin network of the sinuses and the capillaries is highlighted. The more discontinuous reticulin network of the sinuses allowing for the passage of cells from the cords into the sinuses. Once again, this is just the first part of your hematopoietic and immune systems in Medical Histology Laboratory. In the next future slides, in the next presentation, we will talk about the bone marrow, the hematopoiesis process, the macroscopic, and the microscopic anatomy of the second part of this series in Medical Histology Laboratory. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to watch the part 2.